Sir Walter Raleigh's Lost Colony. The story of Virginia begins little boy. His name was Walter Raleigh, and he lived in England. England is an island just off the coast of Europe. It is far across the Atlantic Ocean from America. Walter often heard stories of America, for Columbus had discovered the New World in 1492. That was about 60 years before Walter Raleigh was born. Walter grew up near the coast of England, and he knew many sailors. He liked to listen to them talk. He liked to hear everything they could tell him about the strange new world and the Indians who lived there. The sailors said people from Spain had gone to some parts of America to live. Sometimes Walter lay on the sand of the seashore and dreamed of English ships taking Englishmen to live in America. He knew that Englishmen loved adventure, and he knew they would like to find new lands to make their country great and strong. Walter was a handsome young man when he grew up. He became an officer in the army and was given important work to do for his country. He was sent to London with messages for Queen Elizabeth. Elizabeth was the Queen of England then. She was a great queen. Her people were proud of her and they loved her. A story is told that one day in London, Raleigh saw the queen when she was out for a walk. She was crossing the street and there was a mud puddle right in front of her. Walter Raleigh and many other people were watching the queen go by. Raleigh was wearing a fine new velvet cape, but quick as a flash, he took it off. He bowed low and threw his beautiful new cape over the mud puddle. He did not care if his cape were ruined so long as his queen did not get her feet wet. After this, Queen Elizabeth and Raleigh became friends. The queen helped him to become a rich and important man in England. But Raleigh did not forget about his dream of English people going to live in America. He hoped he could make his dream come true by planting a colony in America. In those days, sending settlers to live in America was called planting a colony. Raleigh told Queen Elizabeth that he wanted to plant a colony. The queen gave her permission. But before, what, before Raleigh sent actual settlers to America, he wanted to find a good place for them to live. He sent some explorers to look for a place. The explorers crossed the Atlantic Ocean and sailed along the coast of what is now North America, actually, and North Carolina. It was summer, and the weather was warm, and the sky was blue. The explorers landed on an island along the coast. They found grass and big trees. They saw deer and other animals and many birds. In this new country, the explorers also saw Indians. The English had heard about Indians, for Columbus had found them here when he discovered America. The Indians seemed friendly. One day, the English watched an Indian catch enough fish to fill his canoe in less than half an hour. On another day, they saw a tall Indian wearing a copper plate on his head. He gave the Englishmen 20 animal skins for one of their bright tin pans. The Indian made a hole in the pan and hung it around his neck. Raleigh was pleased when the explorers came back and told him about the country they had found and the Indians who lived there. He thought the country should have a beautiful name, and he wanted to name it for the queen. He asked Queen Elizabeth if he might name Virginia for her. Elizabeth was often called the Virgin Queen of England because she had never been married. So the new country was named Virginia for her. The English people liked the name. For a long time, all the land that is now the eastern part of the United States was called Virginia. Elizabeth wanted to honor Raleigh, so she made him a knight. After that, he was called Sir Walter Raleigh. Soon, Sir Walter Raleigh was ready to send his first settlers to Virginia. He sent more than 100 men to the island that the Indians called Roanoke Island. This island is now part of North Carolina today. At that time, it was part of Virginia. Raleigh's explorers had seen Roanoke Island in the summer. They did not know that bad storms came to the island in the winter. The settlers were not happy on Roanoke Island. 
They did not want to live in such a stormy place, and many of the Indians were not friendly. The settlers went back to England as soon as they could get a ship to take them. Sir Walter Raleigh's first colony failed. The colony failed, but Sir Walter Raleigh did not give up. He sent more explorers, more settlers. He had heard about the bay that the Indians called Chesapeake Bay. Raleigh wanted to plant his new colony on the Chesapeake Bay. But the captain of the ship would not take the settlers there. He made them land on the stormy island of Roanoke again. He sailed away and left them, and they had to build their own town where the first settlers had been so unhappy. The governor of this colony was a man named John White. He was an artist. He had been to Virginia before. He had made maps of the country and had drawn pictures of the Indians and their towns. Governor White's daughter, Eleanor, was the wife of a settler named Ananias Dare. Soon after Ananias and Eleanor Dare came to Roanoke Island, a baby daughter was born to them. They named her Virginia after her new country. Little Virginia Dare was the first English child born in America. About a week after the baby was born, her grandfather, Governor White, had to go back to England to get supplies for the colony. He thought he could get everything the settlers needed and come back in a few months. But when he reached England, he found that England was at war with Spain. Queen Elizabeth needed all her men and her ships to fight the Spaniards. Even Sir Walter Raleigh could not help his colony then. Governor White had to wait nearly four years before he could get a ship to take him back to Roanoke Island. Would he find his daughter and little Virginia alive and well? At last, the long voyage was over and the governor landed, but nobody was there. All the houses were empty and falling down. Governor White and his men, who were there with him, looked everywhere. They blew trumpets and shouted. They sang old songs that the settlers loved. No one answered. The governor found one clue that the settlers had left. The clue was the word Croatan, carved on a tree trunk. There had been friendly Indian a friendly Indian tribe nearby who were called the Croatan Indians. Had all the settlers gone away with the Croatan Indians? Had they died of some strange sickness? Had every one of them been killed? What had happened to them? There was no one to answer these questions. Governor White never found out what happened to his little granddaughter, Virginia Dare. We never found out what became of her mother and father and the other settlers. To this day, nobody knows what became of them. We call them the Lost Colony. Sir Walter Raleigh did not have the money to send any more settlers to Virginia, but there were other men who wanted England to have a part of the New World. These men kept on trying to plant a colony. Before Sir Walter Raleigh died, there was an English colony on the land that he and Queen Elizabeth had named Virginia. <laughs>